Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot your unsupported OpenCore Legacy Patch or Mac with Mac OS and Windows 10 using Legacy BIOS version and Master Boot Record Partition Scheme. I'm going to walk you through the entire process from start to finish. We got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Before we get started here, I want to go over a couple notes. Also, the equipment that we're going to need and the compatibility of your Mac and which version of Windows 10 that you're going to use. And I also wanted to mention that this this video is always set up in chapters so you can go to the right place that you needed to do. And I also have an update section for if there's any changes in the future to the way that we're installing today. So the first thing I wanted to go over was that this is for installing Windows 10 Legacy BIOS mode. So you can dual boot your unsupported OpenCore Legacy Mac with Mac OS Big Sur, Mac OS Monterey, or a future version of Mac OS with Windows 10. When I mention Legacy BIOS, there's two different ways that we can install Windows on older Macs, and they are U UEFI and Legacy BIOS. The next thing I wanted to talk about is that before we get started, we're going to be using your Mac and a USB drive. Make sure you back up all data on your USB drive and on your Mac just in case something goes wrong. The way that I'm installing today is with just your Mac. You do not need another Mac or a Windows PC to follow these steps. Now let's talk about the equipment that you're going to need. First of all, a USB flash drive, 16 gigabytes or larger. You're also going to need a blank DVD that we're going to use to create a bootable version of the Windows 10 installer. This video is focused around showing you how to install the legacy BIOS version of Windows 10 on your Mac. And that supports 2009 to early 2013 Macs. Which version of Windows 10 installer we're going to use? A USB based install or a DVD based install? And when we want to try to make it as simple as possible, if your Mac has a DVD drive, then you're using the DVD version of Windows 10. If it does doesn't, and it's in these years, then you can use the USB base install, but you can also use a DVD drive over USB. So let's take a look at this. This is what a early 2013 MacBook Pro looks like with a USB install of Windows 10 and a DVD base install of Windows 10 over a USB DVD drive. The Windows label here means that it is the legacy BIOS based installer. EFI boot means it is the UEFI based installer. We're going to always be using Windows for legacy BIOS. So as long as your USB installer says Windows here, you can click on it. But if you don't see this here because you're outside those years, because you have a DVD drive, then you want to be able to click on the Windows version right here to be able to start the installer. Now I go over this again here and you can pause this on the screen or you can read this in the description. I go over more details over the years and I also talk about the drive formatting for bootcamp app. And I talk about the Windows 10 partition format that it's expecting if you're seeing an error in the installer. I also have a link down here to my UEFI version of Windows 10 installation video, and that's for late 2013 or newer Macs. Okay, our demonstration Mac today is going to be a 2010 Mac Mini running Mac OS Monterey with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now you can also use Big Sur, that's totally fine, but as long as you're using a patcher and you want to be able to dual boot your Mac between Mac OS and Windows 10, this is the start of the video here for you. This is the section where we have to decide which version of Windows 10 we're going to get. If we're going using the USB flash drive base install for 2012 Macs that do not have a DVD drive, then you can download the latest version of Windows 10 right from the Microsoft site. But if you have a 2009 to 2012 with a DVD, you're going to need to get a version of Windows 10 that fits on a DVD. And that's the next section. I'm going to show you how to download and then create the DVD. If you're going to do the USB based installed, skip on to the next section. Is I downloaded a Windows 10 version that is the last final version to be able to install on a DVD without any modifications at all. Now keep in mind, there's a lot of experts out there that are watching this video. You might know how to to split a Windows 10 installer into a smaller version by stripping out pieces that are not needed, or you might have a custom version of Windows 10 that you can use. Feel free to use that. If you can get Windows 10 onto a DVD that boots properly, use it. This is the one, version 1803, that is the final official version that can fit on a DVD that I haven't, didn't have any problems with at all. The only problem is that it's not available from Microsoft's site anymore. So what I did is I downloaded it directly from Microsoft, and then I uploaded it to the Internet Archive. This is my personal copy that I downloaded that you can use. So you can see down here, make sure that it says uploaded by Mr. Macintosh blog. And you know, this is the right version that we're going to use here. All we need to do is scroll down here and you see the download options right here. This is the ISO image here that we're going to need. You can see it's 4.4 gigabytes. So all you need to do is click on this little download button here and it'll automatically start to download from the Internet Archive. Click on allow. 
and it'll go right to your downloads folder here. Now keep in mind, the Internet Archive can be a little bit slower on its download speeds, but it'll get downloaded within time. And once it's done, we can move to the next part. Okay, now that we have the Windows 10 ISO downloaded here in our downloads folder, we can use it to create the installer DVD before we use the Bootcamp Installer Assistant. So let's take our DVD now and put it into our internal CD DVD drive combo drive here or our USB DVD reader and writer. Okay, we can click ignore for now. We'll go into Macintosh hard drive, click on finder, and then we wanna to go to the downloads folder and this is where our ISO is. We wanna right click or control click on it and then we want to be able to click burn to disk. Now all we need to do is burn the disk with this application, but what we can do here to save some time is click on this button here so we can edit the settings and then uncheck verify burn data and then click on burn. And there it goes. Now we'll give this some time to burn the DVD. It should take anywhere between about maybe five to 10 minutes. We'll see in a couple minutes. Okay, the DVD is just finished. It's closing the session and finishing the burn and it's going to eject the drive. Once it's ejected, you can push it back in. Our Windows 10 DVD is created and we're ready to go here for the next step. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is plug in our USB drive, our 16 gigabyte, our larger USB drive. We're gonna plug that in right now and it should load right here to the desktop. Now you can see this is just a previous one that I used for a Mac OS Monterey installer, but we're gonna erase it. So we'll open up Disk Utility in the Application G utilities folder and then we will see all the drives here and then here external see how it says external we'll click on this guy here and then we will also click on the view and then show all devices so we can see the structure we want to click on the top level drive because sometimes brand new drives coming from the store are formatted windows and that's fine for this particular setup this is how you can get the third partition scheme part if you click on just down here you won't get this third scheme here so we can call it whatever we want we can just make it mac os extended journal and leave it GUID because the bootcamp app will format it properly for us. So we'll click on erase here. And before we do, make sure that if you have any files on here to copy them off and back them up before we erase because the entire USB drive will be erased. Okay, click on erase. Process is complete. And we're done with disk utilities. So we can close it out here. And now we can go into the Bootcamp Assistant application. It is in Macintosh Charge Drive or click on Finder, go into Applications, and then go down to the Utilities folder, and we're looking for the Bootcamp Assistant application. We can click that, and we can read this real quick. Bootcamp Assistant helps install Microsoft Windows on an Intel-based Mac by downloading the necessary support software and creating a partition on your disk with Windows, and then selecting the Windows installer. Please click on the Open Bootcamp Help button for instructions for finishing. So we're going to click on Continue here. So as you can see, we're going to create a Windows 10 or later install disk here. We also have check mark box here, download the latest version of Apple software. These are the drivers that we're going to use for this model once Windows 10 comes back up and we're going to install Windows 10 or later version. So we're going to click on continue here. It's already detected that we have an ISO, a compatible ISO in our downloads folder here. And it's also detected that we have a proper destination disk, which is our USB drive. We'll click on continue here. And we will enter in our password for the administrator user. Now it's going to mount the ISO of Windows 10. It's going to format the USB drive and create a USB installer. When this is done, it's going to have all the drivers that we're going to need to use to install to get things like Wi-Fi, graphics, and stuff like that when we're done. So we're going to let this finish here, and then we'll come back when it's going to ask us how to partition the drive next. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, now at this point, the Bootcamp Assistant, after it finished its create the USB drive with the Windows 10 installer and downloaded the drivers, it should have been completed and we should be at the partition screen at the next window to be able to partition our disk. But if you get this error here, the Windows 10 installation file, so we're not detected, we have to do a fix for you. So if you're at the next partition window, you can skip right to the next step and I'll walk you through that. But if you get this error, I'll show you how to fix it right now. So click on OK here and then we have to open up Disk Utility. We have to go over here and we have to eject these drives here, right here. Eject this drive here and eject bootcamp. And remember, you have to have show all devices selected here and then eject the win install, not the top level, just the win install here. Click eject here. Give it a second. And then we want to mount it. Click mount. 
and then it'll mount it on the desktop. We can close Disk Utility now. We have to go into the Win and Install uh, USB base install here, move this to the side, and now we have to mount the Windows 10 ISO. So go to Downloads, click on the Windows 10 ISO here to mount it on the desktop. Give it a second. Now it's mounted. Let's open that up here and we'll move this off to the side here. And the problem is that this setup exe file, for some reason, the bootcamp assistant app is overwriting the setup exe file with the bootcamp setup exe. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this and label this bootcamp underscore bootcamp or whatever you want to do. And then we're going to move over the Windows 10 setup EF exe file over here, which is what the, the bootcamp assistant app is looking for. And then once that's copied over here, we now can go back to the bootcamp assistant. We are going to unclick because we already have it created and we already downloaded the latest drivers. Now we just wanted to go on to the partitioning part. We can close both windows here and click on continue. And there we go. Now we're at the bootcamp assistant partition screen. Now this is where we need to decide how much of the drive we're going to give to windows here. We can slide this slider as much as we want. If we know we're going to use windows for most of the time, we can make it very large. If you want to split it up, you can do that or just make windows a little bit smaller for this install. Let's do 125. Think about this because it's extremely difficult to resize this. If you end up using windows to play games a lot more and you find out you need more space ill on the side of giving more space to window. Click on install. It's going to partition the disk here. We'll give it a second. We'll be right back. Okay, we're halfway done to the partitioning of the disk. What we're going to need to do is, again, if we're using the USB-based install here, we don't need to do anything. We're going to just hold down option because this is going to try to reboot immediately to the USB-based installer. We're going to have to hold down option and then pick the USB-based installer. If you have the older Mac 2009 to 2012 that has a DVD, put the DVD in now. So it's ready and loaded, and then we're going to have to hold on option because we're going to pick the DVD base install right from the boot picker once this restarts. It cannot boot to the CD on its own. Okay, the DVD installer is ready to go. Okay, we're finishing up here right at the very end. And there we go for the reboot. Okay, there's our chime. Continue holding option. And there we go. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Since we have a Mac with a DVD drive here, we do not see the Windows version of the Windows 10 installer from that USB drive. If we had a Mac with no DVD drive, we would see Windows just like we do here. And that's what you would be able to boot to if you had a Mac without a DVD. Now remember, if you're following along with a late 2013 or 2014 Mac, you will want to click on EFI boot because your bootcamp assistant has part partition your disk with GPT and that's the only version that you're going to be able to install. But again, using legacy BIOS to boot, so we are going to select Windows to boot and then click on return or click on the arrow and then it'll boot right to the legacy BIOS version of Windows 10 installer. Here we go. There's our Windows 10 logo here and we'll give it a little bit of time to boot right into the installer. We'll be right back. All right, we are in the legacy BIOS version of Windows 10 installer. Now, if for some reason you booted into the EFI one, the window will actually look a little bit different. It'll look smaller and have a higher resolution. Now let's click on next here and install now. Now you can type in your Windows 10 CD key near here, but we'll, we can always do that later. I can click on do not have a product key. Make sure you select the right version that you have of the product key. We're going to click on Windows 10 Pro here, click on next and accept the terms next. And then we're going to do a custom Windows 10 install and give it a second to load here. And it should automatically select the bootcamp. Click on next right here. Setup is going here and that's it. We'll wait for this install. We'll be right back after the install. Okay, we are at the boot selection screen. After the Windows 10 installation finishes, it's going to try to reboot back into Mac OS. We need to hold down option after the reboot of the installer, and then we have to move the arrow or use your mouse cursor to go over to Windows here, and then select Windows to continue the install. If you didn't eject your DVD, it's going to try to boot to the DVD, but when you get that message, do not click on any key, and it will not boot to the DVD and go right to the installer to finish up here. There we go. Okay, this is a second and final reboot for the Windows install. We have to again hold down option after it rebooted and move over to the Windows to finish the installation to get it to the setup assistant window.
Okay, we're at the setup assistant. I'm gonna walk into the setup and as soon as I have the desktop, we'll continue on install the drivers. Okay, we made it to the desktop of Windows 10. Now the first thing we need to do is install the bootcamp drivers. Well, sometimes it pops up automatically, but if it doesn't, you need to go to the file and then navigate to our USB drive that has all of our drivers on it. So there's our win install. We'll click on that. And then remember how we had to rename that bootcamp setup? There it is. All we need to do is double click on it and then we want to run bootcamp. Now what it's going to do is it's going to air out possibly and tell us that it failed due to not being able to install on Windows 7. So we'll click on OK. And what it's going to do is going to recognize that it failed and set it up in compatibility mode here. Give it a second. There we go. We're going to install using the compatibility settings here. Now we'll double click on it again and then yes. And there we go. Click on next. Agree. Next. And then we're also going to make sure we leave that check mark on and then click on install. There we go. We'll let this run and we'll be right back. Okay, the bootcamp drivers have been successfully installed. Before we reboot though, let's go back into File Explorer and then go to this PC and we're gonna eject that DVD. Right click on there and eject. Okay, it's ejected. Now we can close this out and then click on finish and then we're gonna restart. If we're going to boot into Windows all the time, we can hold down Option after this restart and then make that the default boot disk. So we'll go over to Windows again like we talked about, hold down Control, and then hit Enter. All right, we're at the login window here. Hit Enter to log in. Okay, we're back in. We see the Boot Camp Helper menu came up here. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we might need to adjust the speaker. So we'll click on the speaker here and we'll see if we got any sound. No sound. So look at the selection that it has here. We have to click on there and click speaker. So we'll click on this. We'll click on the speakers here. Test out the sound. All right, we got sound. Next thing we'll do is we'll click on Wi-Fi here. We'll click on Wi-Fi. We'll click connect to the endpoint. Okay, our Wi-Fi is now connected. What we do here is update the Windows 10 installation here. So we'll go to updates. Check for updates. And we are already downloading and installing. So we'll let all this finish and then we will be back. Okay, we're back after the software updates are finished installing. Now keep in mind, one of the final parts is to update Windows 10 to the latest feature release, and that'll take a little bit of time. There'll be a couple of reboots, and once you're done with that feature release, you'll get this page saying, hey, you've got the latest version of Windows Update. But we're not done yet because we have to update Bootcamp or any Wi-Fi drivers before we're finished. So to do that, we need to search for Apple software update. So we'll just type in update. And you can see Apple software update here. Click on the app. This software update app that came with the bootcamp drivers is old and can be all the way from back to 2011. So for some reason it gets about a 10% through and crashes. I'll show you what we need to do. So we'll just quit this. If that happens and Apple software update doesn't work, all you need to do is download iTunes for Windows right here. And then what's interesting is, is that version of iTunes includes a new updated version of Apple software update, and that will fix the crashing issue. So we'll go back here and we will do Apple software update and see what kind of updates we have. Okay, we've got our updates here. Now we don't need iTunes because we installed that to fix the crashing issue. So we can unselect that. And then we will install the Wi-Fi update for bootcamp and the bootcamp update. So we'll click on install two items and it'll start to download and install. The updates are installed. All we need to do is click restart. Okay, we're back up. We're updated on the Windows 10 side. And we're also updated on the bootcamp side with Apple software update. Now there's one more thing that we need to consider here is if we want to be able to get back into Mac OS with open core legacy patcher, we need to restart windows and then hold down the option key and manually boot into Mac OS that way. Okay, hold on option. There's our chime. Okay, so of course, if you want to have Windows, just hit Enter or hit Control, and it'll turn to the circle, and that'll make Windows the default. Now, if you want to get back into Mac OS, you have to arrow over or select EFI boot, then hit Control and hit Enter if you always want to be able to boot into Mac OS. But if you want to just be able to boot in there one time to be able to go in there, just click here, and then the next time you reboot, it'll go into Windows. But we'll want to boot into Mac OS all the time, so we can just hit Enter. 
and then it'll boot right into Mac OS using Open Core Legacy Patcher. Okay, let's talk about Windows 11. First of all, Windows 10 should be supported by Microsoft to October 14, 2025. Microsoft will continue to support at least one version of Windows 10 release until that date. The key here is that if you want to be able to update to Windows 11, you can, but there's going to be a couple caveats here. And what I mean by that is that Windows 11 requires the TPM. This is the trusted platform module. If your device does not meet the minimum requirements because of TPM, you may want to read this article, see if there's steps that you can take to remediate this or enable that. Mac does not have that. And the only way around that is to use, for example, Parallels, which has that option in there to be able to enable that, or there's ways to remove that requirement. So if you guys want to be able to see me walk you through installing Windows on your Open Core Legacy Patch or Mac, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll help you out. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up or a share. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. And I also want to thank all my viewers and especially my Patreon members. You guys are great and I really appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.